Hello and welcome to the last video that we'll be doing in the Black Marxism and Water series. I really enjoyed doing this series so far. Um, it's one of my favorite ones because I think that it'll be a really interesting angle that people can use to contest a variety of affirmatives on the upcoming water resolution. I think is overall just a literature base that I think more teams are becoming like uh, more comfortable with and flexible with, even though it's kind of like always been around in terms of how you've been able to recap literature. And I think the differences in how like Black Marxism and racial capitalism is kind of like theories and uh, ways of organizing have kind of like differentiated themselves from some of the other ways that people have read and presented the cap k and hopefully this kind of lecture series is kind of help you to better understand that um if you if this is kind of like your first time tapping into the black marxism and water series i definitely think that you should at least watch the intro to black marxism and water uh, video in order to get a good idea of what i'm thinking about the relationship is between this critique and this resolution as a whole and then i think that maybe watching at least the last video that i did in terms of beginning to talking about answering black marxism apps is really good as a kind of like framework or an intro to some of the stuff that we'll be talking about in this video as we continue that conversation and apply it to the context of what we think about black marxism as a criticism um when um we're trying to answer it from the lens of reading critiques or counterplans and dissads and so in this video i kind of want to go in depth on kind of further explain how the best ways i think to answer these types of criticisms when they're read on the affirmative and the best types of ways i think your negative strategies can kind of like definitely um compete with the crux of what i think these affirmatives are trying to push at in order to really um, make their um, arguments are uh, really potent and strong and I think being able to understand the mindset that that has through some of the other videos that I've done can be really important overall to get a really good idea of what does these uh, kind of uh what these kind of uh, arguments really compose of. So I think at the level of just like the criticism as a whole, I think that when you're trying to really read the criticism against this type of affirmative, I think the first thing that you want to do is decide your relationship to two core questions. What is your relationship to the question of like materiality and praxis? Is that a lens that you want the alternative to have to compete on? Is that the lens through which you think the judge should comfortably evaluate the debate or not? And why or why not? And being able to figure out how that aligns with the rest of the type of criticism that you want to read and how you want to criticize the affirmative. I think that if you're coming from a place where you really want to indict just the theory of Marxism and its ability to really uh, accomplish or be encompassing in the way that the affirmative suggested to you, then I think that maybe starting to focus on just the materiality question can be a really hard place to really center a lot of your offense. And so winning a lot of arguments about why that kind of like top level theorization of how we think about capitalism can be an interesting place to start the discussion. But I also think that um, if you have a place where you think you have an alternative method that can really compete head on with the types of examples that are given by the affirmative, then there are a lot of ways in which you can kind of shave time off of the things that you have to compete with by under by kind of like allowing the uh, focusing of materiality and trying affirmative into a kind of a confidence state that you can kind of use <clears throat> in order to center a lot of the offense that you want to make based off the examples and other types of places that they think they might sit comfortably in in a lot of other debates. I think then after that, the second thing that you have to really decide your uh, fate on is really to figure out what your relationship is to the question of just the impact comparison as a whole in this debate. I think that it can be a really interesting question to try to figure out what how you should be uh, resolving the impact debate, especially in a world where they have really good linkages to being able to resolve impacts at both the kind of like structural day-to-day -day microaggressional level and also at the level of just like how these structures kind of create and condition various types of institutions that have like much more like, I guess, like large scale grasp or reach. And I think in that sense, being able to figure out how you kind of want to focus what type of impacts you want the affirmative to be able to gain access to and what terms you want them to be able to speak on the value of those impacts is incredibly important when you're against this type of affirmative because I think that what's really strong about that affirmative is that it's able to lean into different types of impact scenarios that affect and are able to uh, show different various types of values of how we're able to calculate and think about how violence registers in various communities and so I think overall just having a criticism that is really able to encompass and think through uh, some of the complicated questions questions of like how we're supposed to be responsible for thinking about these different impacts and how they're happening at different scales and what ones the judge should prioritize in terms of what their ballot can resolve can really help you uh, get a lot of and shave a lot of the stuff off of what the affirmative can really make relevant inside the debate and can also make it harder for them to try to pivot into uh, some of these other scenarios and impact scenarios that are less relevant and valuable to impose on the particular debate because of the way it opens up another lens for you to really critique the logic that the affirmative is following and I think in that sense you have a really strong background to at least start making uh, and filling in some of the other places where you really want to contest this argument. I think from there, from whatever criticism that you want to read, the key thing to do is to make sure that your arguments are consistent and that you're really trying to focus the debate and streamline it into questions that really fit into each other. This is the truth with any criticism. You want to have a strong story, but I think particularly against arguments about capitalism, the way that judges are just perceiving these arguments and the way that I think people are just more conscious of capitalism as a thing in their daily lives, they kind of, uh, I think, are much, it's a much easier criticism 
criticism to follow along than a lot of others. And so I think a lot of times when I'm on the negative against this type of criticism, I'm always thinking from the standpoint of how can I make my stuff extra clear and kind of follow along a clear path of what kind of like lens I'm contesting with the affirmative and how that applies to every lens of how the judge is evaluating the debate. So a lot of these other kind of like excess examples and ways that the affirmative is touching the debate, it doesn't really over override the kind of central questions that I want to ask about the affirmative, which I think is a strategic position to be in. I think then when you kind of move on to like what you should do in the context of a counter plan or dissat debate, I really think that a lot of the uh, questions are really about your ability to push the question of the impact turn debate in a way that uh, requires you to really answer a lot of the nuances of this affirmative. I obviously think things like cap good can definitely apply but i also think there are really interesting ways in which you could subsume a lot of the arguments that the affirmative wants to make by making arguments about like how like the kind of like inevitability of capitalism makes privatization maybe a better turn than like what is possible in the status quo if the if we, you kind of win the inevitability of capitalism as a structure and challenges to its transition and i think doing so can allow you to really open up a really in-depth debate about the scale of the method and its ability to like actually make a transition away from capitalism and then kind of bear that against the question of what the counter plan or dissent does or how it's thinking about the role of politics and i think that can really change how the judge is thinking about like what should really be the focus of the debate and how the debate should be used as a particular space for what type of particular political planning and i think in that sense you can make a lot of their examples and a lot of the arguments that they are usually maybe more comfortable winning seem a lot less convincing or a lot less uh useful at scale because of the particular way that you're creating a frame around what particular types of ways of evaluating politics are useful for the particular type of debate that you're in that i think is like a special uh, important for how you want to frame those types of debates and then when I think you go into it I think it's really just a question of how can you answer the nuances of the AF by holding the method responsible for its ability to respond to those nu nuances even if you can't particularly win that the idea of responding to those things in the first place is necessarily bad in that sense I think it really opens you up to maybe a different uh, way of like thinking about maybe not so much an impact turn debate but a question of just like what do we do out of necessity out of the question of time frame and the way in which things like water crises and the environment Environment pose particular like time frames and impending crisis on our ability or need to create like resolutions at large scale and how does that kind of match up with the way that you're doing politics versus the affirmative and I think in that sense you can really end up on a ground as particularly comfortable for the way that you want to orient your offense hopefully this video is helpful for you and hopefully you'll tune in to more videos that I'll be doing in order to yeah just think about and take in um, some of the ideas that I have about this resolution as a whole and some other concepts from debate thanks